welcome back to raw food prep class. Today we've got another delicious recipe for you. And we're gonna get into some of the liquid feasting. And what do I mean by that? I mean soups, making soups. Once again, soup making is one of those staple foods. Everyone eats soup, everyone, well, most people know how to make soup. Soup is normally just boiling vegetables in water until it just becomes soup. What we're gonna do today is make soup probably faster than you've ever made before, tastier than you've ever seen, tasted, well, when you make it yourself, tastier than you would have ever tasted before, and colorful, amazingly colorful, not losing all of that color in the cooking. And the way we're gonna do that is with using our blender. Now, once again, I'm gonna be using the power blender, but you can use a hand blender with this recipe, or you can use a normal smoothie maker with this recipe. It will work with that. You might just need to bend it a little bit longer. The recipe we're gonna be doing is a tomato and red pepper soup. So we're gonna be blending up tomatoes, red peppers, and some other ingredients. And literally five minutes, your soup is done, on the table, ready to be eaten. Soup normally is a half day to a whole day affair with things slowly simmering and adding spices and getting the flavors right. With this recipe, it's so easy. You're just chucking it in a blender, turning it on, and having an awesome soup. So let's get started. You'll notice the first thing in the blender is that it's got some water in it. Now this water has been warmed through slightly, so it hasn't boiled, it's just gotten a bit hot. That way we can have a hot soup. I know you, some of you are wondering, oh, cold soups, I don't know about that. It doesn't have to be cold, you can have it warm by using hot water as your base. Okay, so we've got the hot water in there. And now we're gonna get going with the tomatoes first. And we've got some great big tomatoes here. Let's start with three. Remember to pull off the little green bit. That is actually poisonous if you have enough of that. Just chopping it into quarters is fine for the blender. So tomatoes are great to eat because they've got a lot of something called lycopene in it. Um, what happens with lycopene is it becomes more absorbable and available when you're blending it or when you're, when you're cooking it. As I'm not partial to cooking, I prefer blending it and using warm water does the same thing. But if you look at a tomato, by cutting it open, and certain segments of it as well, when you look at it, it's just got the most beautiful wateriness. It's great for, for getting liquid into our systems, for, high, for making us hydrated. And it's also particularly good for, for the lungs and for the reproductive system with the seeds. Many benefits with tomatoes. Okay, two more of those in there. So our tomatoes are in. Next, we've got red peppers. Now these are beautiful looking red peppers. The thing to remember with your red pepper is that a green pepper is green because it's not ripe. Whereas a red pepper is a green pepper that's ripe. So it's not that it's a different kind of pepper, it's just that the one's picked when it's actually ripe. And picking fruit when it's ripe is much better for your health than picking fruit when it's not ripe. Because the fruit draws up all the nutrients at the end of its ripening period. So that's when you're getting most of the flavor developing as well. So it's had a chance to ripen on the plant to absorb all those minerals in it that your body craves. We're gonna chop that up into to squares to blend that through nicely as well. This is another reason why when you go to the shops, red peppers are more expensive than green peppers because it's quicker to grow something when you pick it not ripe to letting it grow all the way to being ripe. Okay. Now here's an important question. What do you do with that? The seeds of the pepper. You take it outside and you throw it in your garden and then it's gonna grow pepper plants. Never waste anything out of your garden. This is, how many pepper plants is that? Maybe 30 or 40 red pepper plants that you can grow. And if you think of how much money that's gonna save you in the long run, just from planting this one pepper seeds, phenomenal. So really get into any of the fruit that you have. If you cut it open and there's seeds in it, put it in your vegetable garden. Okay, uh, let's do one more. I like to add a bit more of this because it gives the, the soup a bit more of a texture to it. It's not so watery. The tomato is quite watery, so it does make the, the soup quite watery. Excellent, we've got the peppers in. So tomatoes, peppers, what else have we got? Ah, red onions. 
Okay, so I use red onions. I prefer red onions to white onions because they're red. Now, the color in food indicates the antioxidants in the food. Antioxidants, remember, those things that stop us from rusting from the inside out. And the more color it has, or the deeper the colors, the more antioxidants are present. So the red onions has got plenty of antioxidants in it. And we're just going to need about a quarter of a red onion for this amount of soup. Yeah, about a quarter. Rest of your red onion keep and use that for another soup. Okay, now we're going to get into some more flavoring aspects. We start off with basil. We've got a mixture of purple and green basil. Once again, purple, color, amazing color too. There's so few foods that are actually purple. So if you can get hold of purple basil, excellent, excellent, potent, strong smelling and tasting basil. So we've given these a rinse. We're just going to pop all of that in there. Mm, might as well finish it. Go. Basil. And basil is also an incredibly easy herb to grow in your garden. Get a seedling, get some seed, get it growing. It really likes a lot of sunlight. So it's normally only going to grow in the middle or towards the end of summer. Okay, what else do we have for flavor? We have a little bit of rock salt, and this is Himalayan rock salt. It's a type of salt that's been laid down thousands, if not millions of years ago. And it's a complete mineral salt, like sea salt is. So yeah, you could choose either sea salt or rock salt. I'm gonna put a bit of that in. This is very different salt to the salt that you get if you buy packets of iodized table salt. Iodized table salt is not the same thing. It's gone through a process where a lot of the minerals are lost and a lot of toxic things are added to it. So make sure you're getting a natural source of salt. Either sea salt or rock salt is the thing to go, through, go for. Okay, what else have we got? Ah. Now we like to have our soup a little creamy, but I'm not wanting to use any animal cream in here, so I'm gonna use nuts. And I've got some cashew nuts, raw cashew nuts, and they'll give it a creaminess and slight more of a heaviness to the soup to make it more filling. So I'm just gonna put about a handful of cashews in there. A few more, there we go. What else is on the table? We've got some olive oil. Olive oil, again, bit of an oiliness and taste to your soup. For your soup so just add in about a tablespoon to two tablespoons in there okay there that'll do that'll sink through and then we have ooh, these ones let's put these in goji berries now i talk about gojis all the time because they're amazing 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 food they have incredible nutritional values to them so add them in to whatever you can now the reason i want to put them in the soup firstly is the color we're trying to make a red soup. Red goji berries will make it an amazing red-orange color. Second reason I want to add the goji berries is for its thickening properties. Gojis make the soup thick, so it acts as a natural thickness. You don't have to use any other thickeners. And here, once again, about a handful will be fine for that. Excellent, we've got the gojis in. Obviously, the main thing the gojis are doing is upping the nutrient density of our soup, so making it have more nutritional value for us. And remember, we eat for nutritional value, so you want to keep thinking, how am I going to up the nutritional value of this meal? What else have I got? Ah, got a little bit of cayenne pepper. Now, cayenne pepper is a type of chili, and I like to add chili powder, especially to the red soup. Um, color, again, but also that spiciness goes very well with the red pepper and with the tomato. If you don't like spicy food, you don't have to add it. And cane pepper is very spicy, so be careful that you don't add too much in there. And I think I'm going to put in about half a teaspoon. I'm actually looking forward to a bit of spiciness today. There we go. And in winter, adding spices to your soup is an excellent way of making it warming to the body. So all our ingredients are in. You can see how amazingly it layers. Other thing you'll notice is I've laid it that the most water content foods are at the bottom. So that means that the tomato has got most water in it it's at the bottom. And then it goes up, up, up to drier, drier. That's so that the blades, when they start spinning, have something to grab onto. Because if you throw the dry stuff in first, it'll probably get stuck. And then you'll have to use the tamper to squash it or take it all out and put it back in. So this makes it blend a lot easier. Other things you could add are things like garlic, if you like garlic, or any of the other herbs. Oregano um, is one that comes to mind. But you can play with flavors there. But let's get this blending and see what it looks like. Ready.
you want to leave it blending till you don't hear knocks and things because when it's knocking well, there are little bits that are still solid bouncing around we want our soup to be completely smooth so you want to blend it until it looks and sounds like it's completely smooth so very much depends on what you've actually put in the blender Okay, now one of the most important things obviously is the taste test because have you put enough salt? Did you put in too much spice? You've got to test all of the stuff and that you really can do only with your taste buds. So a teaspoon comes in handy for that. Wow, that is quite spicy but I love it. It is excellent. So I'm going to pour that out into a bowl. And you can see the amazing orange color in that. If you wanted it more red, you can add in more cane pepper or more goji berries. That'll make it more red. Now you have to garnish something properly. And what I like the most is the sprouts that I've grown in the kitchen garden sprouters. These are alfalfa, amazing sprouts. Most people have had alfalfa at some point. Grow them in your kitchen garden sprouter and then use a handful of that on top. Perfect. Now you've got some living green sprout energy in your soup. And that's it. We've made a tomato soup. It's taken us maximum five minutes. It tastes amazing. It looks amazing. Anyone's going to be impressed and think that you've been slaving away at the stove for hours. Well, all you've done is just blended up a few things. So we're going to tuck into that and enjoy that and try this at home. See how it works out. If it's not going smooth enough, maybe you need to lightly steam your vegetables to get it soft enough. Maybe your blender can't handle the, the solidness. But just try it. You'll figure out a way to make it delicious. Now, why is this soup better than buying a soup off a shelf in a supermarket somewhere, a packaged one, a ready-made meal? Firstly, you've put your own love, attention, and energy into making it. Mom's food always tastes better than any other food and there's a reason for that because she loves to feed her children and in that way when someone makes it themselves there's always an energy of love and caring that comes through with that food and that can't be matched with anything that you buy in the shop. Secondly you've had control over the ingredients so you know exactly what's gone in there. You know you've put in good organic ingredients and you have not put in any poisons. What poisons could be in there? Well, there could be preservatives, there could be flavorants, there could be colorants, there could be all manner of poisons present in packaged soups that you've got to be careful of. You have to read the ingredients and then you'll learn about that. What else here? It's as quick as maybe pouring something in and mixing it through, maybe a little bit longer, but certainly not as long as doing it on a stove, so blending is much quicker for that. And I suppose also you learning how to feed yourself as opposed to relying on a shop or someone else to do it for you which is so important to do knowing what to do for yourself to nourish yourself taking that time for yourself to actually honor your body it's the only body you have in this life and if you're expecting someone else to do it for you it's not going to happen you're just going to get inferior grade low nutrient dense foods that are not going to give your body what it needs which is that nutrient boost the other thing of course is that the extreme processing that a lot of these things go into, go through to get onto the shelf means that it's been very denatured. So any vitamins, minerals, nutrients and certainly antioxidants are probably not even there anymore by the time you end up eating it. So what's the point of eating food if it's not actually giving you nutrition? We eat for nutrition, for nutrients. So you need to make your own to make sure you're getting the nutrients in. That's enough reasons to start making your own soup. And lastly, of course, is it tastes amazing. So for flavor, you can add flavors to it. Okay, enough talking. Make your own. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Sayonara. <laughs> That's the best soup ever. Yeah, um, I think everyone's going to want to try this. Come along. <laughs> We've got some more bowls back there, Lex. There's around 70 a kilo, so if we were using 100 grams, that was a lot. Like that, but normally yeah. in the pick and bag or whatever, they sell these little packets. Oh yeah, they rip people off massively like that. 100 grams for like 20 bucks. Yeah. 100 grams of? Nuts. Nice. Alfalfa, right? Yep. Protein. They're all protein. Oh. Oh, you want it now? Yeah. <laughs> Teaspoons, but hey, 
Thank you very much. Oh, you got big spoons. Yeah. No, I think the small spoons are nicer. It makes it go longer. <laughs> hmm. It's a little half a litre. You used hot water, right? Hmm. Hot soup. Oh. That's amazing. It feels so light. It's like eating light. Mm. You are eating light. Mm. Transform light. Mm. Light and sound. I mean, if you put boiling water in, because you like your soup piping hot. You don't have to use work? boiling water. Um, the kettle has an anomaly point, or water does, at 70 Celsius. It doesn't like going above 70, because that's where the molecules start being deranged. Now your kettle will go to around, it'll take, most of the time will be around 70. It'll quickly go to 70 and it'll stay there for about half the time it's boiling. And then at the very end, for the last, say, 10 seconds, it'll shoot up to 100. So you can stop it, say, 20 seconds before it boils, and it'll be at 70, not at 100. And your water wouldn't have deranged and it's not boiling. But, but, but my, uh, I think and that'll burn your mouth. So 55 so, so will... If you want it really hot... 55 will burn your it's mouth. It's not going to change the, no. the effect or anything. Yeah. How about for people use it for killing germs and such? What's a germ? Just a bacteria. Yeah. Well, our heaviest organ in our body is bacteria, right? Mm -hmm. Kilogram of, of flora. <coughs> more cells, more f more organisms, bacterial organisms, and cells in our body. Who's serious? Mm. So then, whose body is it? It's more of them than there are of us. Well, <laughs> I'm certainly no, that which. Us, who, who are they? Mm. Well, I'm that which is conscious of both of them. <laughs> Someone's overrun with. Um, parasites and candida and yeast and mold, which are also just bacteria, uh -huh. which most people are. Uh -huh. That stuff likes a certain brand of food as its energy. Refined carbs, refined sugars and processed meat or meat. Mm -hmm. So you think about the consciousness of all those millions and millions of organisms and your consciousness from your cells, which is far smaller in proportion wise and how many units they are. Like people think, well, yeah, I have free will about eating this junk. <laughs> You're right. It's the yeast, mold, fungus, bacteria and parasites that are influencing your consciousness to eat what they Absolutely. want. Absolutely. Like even in this morning I was hungry, I was like, I've got superfoods coming, I mustn't eat crap. And I bought Jungle Oats bars. And I was like, sorry Jungle Oats, but like, it's not very healthy, is it? It's sugar and stuff, right? Yeah, mm. totally. Um, and like, oh, then when I'm coming home, there's like a banana bread. Like there's a mango there and there's banana bread and I'm like, I know which one's good for me, but I've got to eat it. <laughs> I'm feeding the... You're being possessed. Yeah. Yeah. Because you... Who am I feeding? Bacteria. Candida. Candida. Fungus. fungus Molds. Yeast. We have a visitor. And the yes, corporations. Hello. 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 And you? the corporations. Yeah, good thing. So, should we check this outside in the garden? Let's go. Let's... Broken heart and I can't forget